let's give a applaud to IDH. Yeah, this is first time I, I would say that, are you able to hear me? Yes. I would say that action has been taken. We've been talking about sustainability, but nobody was coming forward to come and invest in it with us. And I'm glad that this is happening. So I'm going to try to share the opportunity which we have. PS is here, and for his years, we have Mr. Katenda. He is a veteran of EPZA, and Mr. Abdul, you are there. So our sector is a $50 trillion market access from here, from Kenya. So that's the big opportunity which we have. We have a $50 trillion GDP access, which includes USA, which includes Europe duty-free, UK duty-free. We have a sector which is $1.8 trillion globally as a fashion sector, and out of that, the apparel sector itself is around $250 billion. And we have a great EPZ policy. We have young workforce. We have now there are big challenges of supply chain due to US-China trade war. So all these things are there for us to now benefit and go forward. <coughs> International brands are leading the change, requiring their suppliers to adhere to increasingly stringent sustainability standards. This is driven by demand for sustainable, sustainably produced goods and services by consumers. Let me begin with a brief on of the EPZ textile and apparel sector. The subsector has 29 companies under the EPZ license in Kenya. The subsector sub directly employs 50,000 jobs, accounting about, for 76 of the 76 percent of the entire workforce within EPZ. It is also worth noting that 80% of these employees are women. The textile and apparel sector is the most labor intensive in the manufacturing sector, hence the need for a strong workforce. This demonstrates its key role in creating jobs in line with the government's economic transformation agenda. Notably, the sector has been prioritized to boost exports by adhering value chain related challenges, especially on fabrics which are critical inputs, and that's what we are talking about, farm to fashion strategy in Kenya, to integrate the whole value chain. Textile and apparel are currently the third largest exports in Kenya after horticulture and tea. In 2021, the textile and apparel sector exported produce worth 50 billion shillings, accounting for 55% of total exports for EPZ firms in the same year. While we have the opportunities, we have the challenges also, and, and now we see that there's a government which is ready to take the challenges and, and, and reciprocate. So I would like to highlight few of the challenges which we are facing in the sector. After the COVID-19 pandemic, the sector has continued to face shocks due to shutdowns as well as global supply chain and logistic challenges. Most of the companies have been running in losses. Despite the losses, companies have invested in increasing their capacities. Unfortunately, this has caused further cash flow challenges. Kenya has become very expensive to operate in compared to competitors in Africa and Asia who are now increasing their competitiveness and catching up. So I always say that previously we had challenges coming out of Asia, but now we would have going forward challenges with our own neighboring countries like Ethiopia and Ethiopia, though it's not in Agoa right now, but in, in, in this year we are expecting them to come back to, to under Agoa and that will be a big competitiveness challenge for us. Following the shocks experience in the last few years, countries gave relief packages, incentives and subsidies to these business communities. However, the direct relief didn't happen in Kenya. Kenya lacks ready to move in spaces, which means setting up a company or expansion takes up to two to three years. We are also grappling with a skill gap. Manufacturers in the EPZ subsector need to train and build their skills. It takes two to three years to fully train an employee, which drives up the cost of doing business. So generally, it is not understood, uh, even by the bankers or the government, that when we start growing, we take unskilled workers and, and start training them. 
even though we train them, we put them on machine, their, their efficiency is only around about 20 to 25%. But the costing which we do is based on a global standard, which is around 70% efficiency. So between that 20, 25% to 70% walk is actually directly invested by the company. And this is what we want to do now, to, to have skilled workforce which can be ready and the companies do not need to waste that time and, and, and money to develop them. Kenya lacks, uh, sorry, we are, we are, from CAM analysis, the cost of doing business in Kenya is 15 to 20% higher than our competing countries. How do we mitigate this? Build infrastructure in house growth and lease at very competitive prices. Currently, and this we have been discussing for long with Mr. Katenda also, that we have space in Ati River, but we don't have ready structures to bring in the investors. So even though we go out there, we talk about bringing new investors and all, but we do not have a ready structure. It takes somebody to come in and pay advances and build that. It takes around one, one and a half years by the time they start. And then, you know, it's a long process. And we need to do that. Reduce the cost of work permits. Change from minimum wage to productivity incentive-based salary. So year on year, we've been having these uh, ceremonial wage increases every, uh, you know, uh, May Day. Uh, and, and, and that doesn't help because the cost of living continues to go up. Our cost as an exporting country continues to go up. But still, the, neither the labor is benefiting out of it because when they go next day to buy bread, it's still expensive. So what we are saying is that we should bring the cost of living down instead of continuously increasing the cost of operations. Reduce the cost of power from current 17 to 19 cents, but I think now even we've been hearing that there will be further increase to, to around 9 cents for all apparel textile or apparel companies. And if there are new companies who want to invest in textile, they, their cost should be at least 5 cents because that's the global, global uh, pricing for textile. If you look at the, our cost of, of producing textile in Kenya, only the energy cost will come to around about 25 percent of the total cost in textile, not apparel. But in textile, it will be 25 percent. If we compare that with Ethiopia, their cost is coming to only 5 percent. So you can imagine the, the competitiveness difference which we have. Need to invest in skill development to export expansion for, for export expansion and be ready for the value added products. Because as our cost has gone up, it is advisable that we start changing our product categories to more higher skill levels and, and, and be in, in market. On taxation, increase the time span on, on the 20 year corporate tax exemption since getting returns on investment takes a long time and it's capital intensive. The government needs to intervene in export and import container freight charges. Even though inward rates have come down globally, export freight has gone up threefold in Kenya. So 2020-2021, it, it was going up across the world, especially from China and all the export prices were high. Kenya was in fact cheaper that time. Now suddenly Kenya has gone up. So if, if we compare our landed duty paid cost in US to Bangladesh or any other European country, our freight factor has gone up by three times. So that's hurting our competitiveness. Enhanced market access for for instance, rules of origin under AFC, FTA, and other markets such as India and China. So that's what we were talking about. I was telling about the local competition now. It will come from the Africa free trade. And we have to be ready for that. There are challenges in rules of origin right now. And, and, and the, that is still not implemented. Though AFC, FTA is implemented, but in our sector, the rules of origin are still not implemented. So we should push for that. Create funding guarantees or Exim Bank of Kenya to fund plant and machinery at competitive price. Set up good structures for cotton farming, including a guarantee-based funding system that protects investor and farmer in the process. So currently, A, we have a land bank challenge in cotton farming, though we continue to talk about it, and, and there is a GMO approval now, but there is a big gap between the financing part of it. 
So farmer, if you like, I have, I had started a cooperative in West Africa where we used to fund the farmer in in kind, from urea to seeds to insecticides to everything, and then there was a guarantee that they will bring back the cotton to us at an agreed price. And if the market goes up, then we will incentivize them. So that kind of structure, cooperative structure is missing in Kenya. And if we do that, then the sector will automatically start performing. Because right now, if a company goes and, and starts issuing this funding, they have no guarantee that the goods will come back. Set up good structure for cotton farming, including yeah, so reduce the cost of living in Kenya. So we do share the aspirations of government, and that's what we've been proposing. And we had a lot of discussion, including with CS Korea also, that we can grow exports from $500 million, which are currently, to $10 billion per annum in 10 years, thus in increasing the dollar re re reserves. Sustain 50,000 current direct jobs and create 300,000 new jobs through value chain integration in the next five years and a total of 1 million jobs, including farming, in 10 years. Full value chain integration from cotton to fashion, attract new investments of around $2 billion, create opportunities for SME growth, self-employment, and women empowerment through full value chain integration. Create a multiplier effect in the local economy of $18.85 billion, which is 2,220 billion shillings, as the multiplier effect is 1.85 times in the economy in 10 years. Increase the government's net revenue by approximately $3 billion by, by simply getting a 16% VAT. So when, when a single dollar comes in the country, there's a multiplier effect of $1.85. And, and technically, whatever money comes in, it's spent by the consumer. So only if the country gets the VAT, that revenue itself will be sustainable. Right now, we keep taxing, 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 but we are not growing the market. So if we grow our market, grow our taxpayer, the revenue will also come. So even though the sector requests, continuously requests to give incentives, support, indirect, direct support, and it is taken as if, oh, why we have to give that money, subsidize the sector, but it should be like investment. So if you invest $500, billion, $500 million, I can give you a spread that you, as a country, Kenya government will be making $900 million over the period, per annum. So that is what is, I think, missing, that we, we keep talking about taxing the same lemons and not increasing the capacity. Create a global, globally competitive business environment to position as manufacturing hub. We have this made in Kenya pride. You know, we should make that brand across the world. Now, thank you, IDH. IDH partnership is critical to us because the international textile and apparel value chains are making efforts towards going green and reducing their ecological footprint. For Kenyan businesses, being un unable to comply with these standards creates a risk of being left out of global supply chains and represents a high cost of missed op export market opportunities. It is thus a paramount importance, both environmentally and economically, to empower the sector in Kenya to embed elements of sustainability. We are excited to be part of the CAM IDF project. Thank you.